The year was 2012. Either you were shouting or dancing Gangnam style, talking about the upcoming US elections and if Obama would win a second term, or you were talking about this elegant, charismatic and confident woman dressed in a white coat who was repeatedly saying words like it's handled, white hat, gladiators in a suit. Olivia Pope graced our TVs and became instantly adored by girls and women all around the world. And by girls all around the world, I mean me. But I don't think I was hip to scandal when it first came out. I think I caught on to it like a few years later when, and then I became instantly hooked. Maybe it was due to the fact that I had never seen a black female lead in a TV series before. Or maybe there was something about Olivia that was so captivating and magnetic. Or maybe it was due to the fact that every time she stepped on my TV screen, she owned it. This was because Olivia was not just a character. She was a brand. A brand that represented power, intelligence, and sophistication. A brand that appeals to millions of viewers who wanted to be just like her or be with her. A brand that was carefully crafted by the show's creators, Shonda Rhimes and Betsy Bears, who knew how to market their products to the masses. So much so that five years after the show ended, clips from the show went viral on TikTok in 2023. And that's what we will explore in this video essay. How Scandal leveraged branding to create one of the most iconic and influential female characters in television history despite her sometimes shady and questionable tactics and the lessons that you can learn from it for your own brand elevation. But first, what is branding in business? Branding, not to be mistaken with marketing, is the process of creating something that identifies and differentiates a product or service from other products or services in the market. This differentiation will help establish a special connection and loyalty with customers. But to do this and do it well, there are several elements that need to be mixed together. And no, it's not just logos and color palettes. Even though those are part of it, there are several steps that most people skip. With that being said, let's get into it, starting with the most obvious one that everyone knows about. I'm sure you've seen Olivia's iconic white coat and her preference for neutral colors and her elegant accessories which she has worn throughout the series. Now, for an untrained business eye, this may look normal. But from a branding perspective, this is strategy mixed with psychology. Here's what I mean. Her white coat symbolized her desire to be on the side of justice and morality, even when she had to deal with corruption and scandal. Her neutral colors reflected her calm and composed demeanor, even when she faced chaos and danger. Her elegant accessories showed her sophistication and professionalism, even when she had to deal with personal and emotional issues. So, her visual identity was not just about her appearance, but it was also about her personality, her values, and her goals. And why is this important in branding? Well, you see, having a unique visual identity is a powerful tool to attract, engage, and retain your customers. And it also helps you to create a strong impression and a lasting connection. It subtly communicates your message about who you are without you even having to say too much and it also helps you create your unique selling point and then stand out from your competitors but just having a visual identity is not enough to create an elevated brand without this next step remember these words it's handled gladiators white hat olivia used these words frequently throughout the series. But they were not just words. They were actually statements that conveyed her beliefs, her values, and her goals. But they were also tools that she used to influence, persuade, and motivate others. Here's what I mean. Let's look at each one of them, starting with It's Handled. This was Olivia's 
signature phrase that she used whenever she faced a problem or a challenge. Every time a client calls her, she always says it's handled. What that means is that she was confident, capable and in control of the situation. It also meant that she was reliable, trustworthy and efficient. She was using this phrase to reassure her clients, her team and also herself that she could handle anything that came her way. And in a way, it's handled also implied that she had a solution or a strategy for every scenario. This phrase made her brand stand out as a leader, a problem solver, and a crisis manager, like one of the best. Let's move on to the next one, white hat. This was the symbol that Olivia used to represent her moral code and ethical standards. It meant that she was on the side of good, the side of justice and the side of truth. It also meant that she was willing to sacrifice, compromise and risk everything for what she believed in. She used this symbol to remind herself and others of her values and principles and to challenge them to do the right thing. Also, white heart is the opposite of black heart. And black heart represents evil, corruption and lies. So having the white heart and saying it all the time, she actually had a literal white heart. It shows that her brand is a hero and a role model, right? Now moving on to gladiators. That was the term that Olivia used to refer to her team. What this meant, what gladiators meant was that they were fighters, they were warriors, they were champions who were willing to do whatever it took to protect their clients and each other. It also meant that they shared a common vision, a common vision and a common culture. They were not just employees, they were a family. They were not just colleagues, they were friends. They were not just workers, they were gladiators. This time made her brand stand out as a mentor, a coach and a team player. Why is this important in branding? A common language helps you to create a memorable and an emotional connection with your target audience. It helps you to communicate your message in a fun way. So, you know, if you have a slogan or a tagline or a common language, it helps you differentiate yourself because every time people talk about that or they say that term or, or that slogan or that phrase, they will think of your brand. And if others don't know what the other people are talking about, they will go on to find out, oh, what's that about? So it's really important. But now that you've got a visual identity and a common language, what's next? Remember the term gladiators earlier on? Well, Olivia took it a step further and added three more words to it. Gladiators in a suit. Man, who didn't want to be a gladiator in a suit? Be truthful. You wanted to be a gladiator in a suit. Olivia often referred to her team as gladiators in suits because they were fearless, they were loyal, and they were willing to fight for justice and truth. The term also implied that they, are well, they were well-dressed, professional, and sophisticated. Now, I want you to think of your favorite musicians who have loyal fan bases. One of the things they have in common is that their fans have a community name, just like the Burbs, the Swifties, or the Believers. These names are important because they create a sense of belonging, a sense of identity and pride among the fans. They also make the fans feel connected to the brand or the artist, but they also make them feel connected to each other. Every time you hear people say, oh, I'm a bab, are you a bab too? Or this and that, they are connected to each other. And that way they come together to spread the message fast. A community name is a powerful way to elevate your brand and increase loyalty. People want to be part of something. That's just how we are as human beings. We want to be part of something and giving people a name, an identity. We like to be identified with something. That's why we like to be identified with our cultures or with our countries, where we come from. We like to be identified with something. Give your community a name. And you can do this with some tips of Think of what your brand stands for and what your values are and that you share with your audience and think of words or phrases that capture that value or those 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 essences of your brand right maybe you can even ask your audience what names they will suggest but just make sure that it's catchy 
it's memorable and it's easy to spell and understand. People don't want to be struggling to, to know what your slogan is or your tagline is, okay? Now, personally, I think these three strategies were really crucial. But I think this final one is the real reason why women around the world loved Olivia. Women and men, even men loved Olivia too. And by the way, if you're looking for a community-led educational platform that teaches branding, content marketing, storytelling, launching, public speaking, and more for brand owners, then Brands That Connect Hub is for you. I'll link it in the description. Let's move on to the final, final step. Listen, if we're being real, Olivia had some questionable tactics and morals, sometimes. But we loved her anyway because she sold us a feeling. A feeling of being powerful, confident, and in control. A feeling of being able to handle anything, any situation, no matter how complex or messy it is. A feeling of being a gladiator in a suit. This feeling was not only conveyed by her words or by her appearance, which I've already said. This feeling was also conveyed in her signature work. Remember how Olivia used to stride and work? You know, that fast-paced stride that she used to do. That work showed her determination, authority, and efficiency. And another thing is that she walked in this luxurious office that had this large window that overlooked the White House. This is the ultimate symbol of power and influence in Washington, D.C. Olivia's brand was not just about what she did, but also about what she represented. She represented a category of people who were either ambitious, successful, and influential, or they aspired to be. She represented a category of women who were strong, independent, and respected, or that's what they aspired to be. And she also represented a category of black women who were breaking barriers, challenging stereotypes, and making history. Olivia sold us healing. And by selling us this feeling and owning a category, Olivia's brand elevated her from just being a character to being an icon, an icon that inspired millions of people to aspire to be like her or to be with her, an icon that generated a loyal fan base that followed her every move, every scandal and every romance. We were right there in every romance with her, okay? So all in all, Olivia Pope is a TV icon who, through strategic branding, inspired millions of viewers. So observers, have I done a great job in observing these brand elevation strategies from Scandal's Olivia Pope? Let me know in the comments. Let's move this conversation in the comments.